Welcome to Picture Healer channel. In this video, we are going to look at the bedroom feng shui and the best way to set up your bed. This is a quick checklist. A lot of rules apply to different areas of the house. So we'll start with the general rules. The first one is to set up the bedroom so it's darker than your living room or your public space. And we mentioned that in the last video about the living room feng shui. It's more balanced when the bedroom is a little bit darker so you can rest better. But it doesn't mean you'll be completely dark or without windows. We still need a proper light and air circulation. It's just not as bright as the living room. And the second rule for the bedroom is to keep the room away from the main entrance. Especially for the master bedroom, it's better to be away from the entrance so you have more privacy. The number three is to avoid any odd room shape, including the floor plan or the ceiling or the walls. The best shape in feng shui is always rectangle or square without missing corner or strange angle or strange curve. If you have a very sloped ceiling, it can mean a lot of fire energy and you will affect your psychology in the long term. When it's square or rectangle, it's very stable and safe for anyone. And number four is proper windows and lighting. We don't want to have too many big windows as bright as the living room, but we still need to set it up so we have control of the lighting. We should have curtains so you can adjust the window light and the proper lamp in the space so you have more control, maybe more intense light for the reading and the softer light for the general space lighting. The number five is to avoid placing the bed below a lowered ceiling or under a big ceiling beam. And this is the basic feng shui concept. The lowered ceiling or the big beam can bring stress, especially if it's directly above your head when you are sleeping. So we can change the direction or add some storage or cabinet behind the bed so you're not sleeping directly under a lower ceiling. And we talk about the remedy in the living room feng shui video. You can add a hulu gourd or add some up lighting or hang a flute under the ceiling to counter the lower ceiling or beams. Number six is to avoid placing the bed directly under a ceiling fan. This is very common in the area with warmer climate. If this is directly above the bed, similar to the last point, it can give you a lot of stress and it can be a symbol of your life. You are running around so much and feel restless. If you do feel your life is getting chaotic, you should stop using the ceiling fan or try to position the bed so it's not directly above your head or above the bed. Number seven is to avoid restroom door facing the bed. This is also very common because a lot of master bedrooms have an attached restroom and the restroom door usually face part of the bed. And in feng shui, this means your house will be compromised. When you are lying down on the bed and the restroom door is facing your leg, that means you will have health issues related to the leg. If it's pointed to your head, that can mean problems with your head. So the best way is not to have the door directly aligned with your bed. If you cannot avoid it, try to keep the restroom door closed and keep the restroom clean so it doesn't create negative energy. The number eight is to have too many electronics near the bed. It's very obvious they can disturb your sleeping. In the modern days, it's very difficult to avoid electronics. We have TV, cell phone, tablet, computer, and many other toys. 
And if you have a big screen TV directly facing the bed, when it's not on, it can be a big reflective surface like a mirror. And it's not a good idea to have it facing the bed directly because sometimes you see your own image when you wake up at midnight and that can be a little bit scary. And uh, another common sense is not to place too many electronics on your bedside table. They all have some type of electric wave. Even though we cannot prove how negative it can affect us, it's better to keep it to the minimum and don't place it next to your head all the time. The number nine is about the mirror or any reflective surface. It can be a reflective glass door or glass cabinet. It works the same way. So here we don't want the mirror to directly facing the bed. And it's okay if the mirror is facing the other direction and not facing the bed directly. And it has a similar effect. You might wake up at midnight and see yourself in the reflection and uh, that's not very relaxing. The number 10 is also about the mirror. We don't want to position the mirror directly aligned with the door. So when we open the door, we don't want to see the mirror directly facing us. It can get a little confusing and that can affect our mind. And the bottom line is that it's harder for you to rest and feel relaxed. The number 11 is that the bed should not be in the position of the pathway or the passage. We don't want it to align with the door directly. And I have two examples here. The left two positions are the bed feng shui and the one on the right is better. When the bed is away from the door, you can rest better and you feel more secure and uh, private. Number 12 is not to place your bed against a wall on one side. And this is about the yin and yang balance. The best situation is to have space on both left and right side, because when you lie down on the bed, the left side is the yang side, represent the male energy, and the right side is the yin side or the female energy. And if you keep both sides open, the yin yang is balanced. That means you have both male and female friends and support. If one side is against the wall, that means either male or female side is blocked. And you might have more problem getting along with that group. I know in reality, there are many limitations. You might not have space to keep both sides open. And it's okay most of the time, especially for children's room. But if you are in the age of trying to get married, you should check to make sure both sides of the bed are open. You can get off from either left or right side. The number 13 is to avoid too much water or in objects in the bedroom. And you probably heard that it's not a good idea to place an uh, aquarium or fountain in the bedroom. And the reason is that the water is part of the yin energy. And we don't want to have too much yin in the bedroom. Other yin objects include natural stones or wood or even a lot of plants. It's okay to display some. But if you have a lot of plants, stones, or any type of real water, then the yang qi can be drained and that can affect your health. So limit those objects. And if you are still worried, you can display some red ribbons on the plant or next to your collection of stones. The red color can bring up the yang energy and the balance the yin. Number 14 is about balancing yin and yang side of the bed. And this usually applies to the master bedroom because the left side is related to the male owner and the right side is the female owner. 
and we can look at the lighting on both sides is one side very bright and one side very dark, then it's not a balanced feng shui. The dark side should add more lighting and the bright side maybe add some curtain so you have control and both left and right will be more balanced. And another way is to look at the furniture. When one side has very tall and big furniture and the other side is low and small, that's also imbalanced. The taller side and the brighter side have stronger qi and usually will have better energy and better luck. And if the other side is the opposite, then it's imbalanced. So check both left and right side to make sure it's the balance you like. The number 15 is proper wall art and sculpture. You can display art and a sculpture that reflect your personality and from your favorite artist. But some art can cause feng shui problems. Generally, we want the bedroom art to represent harmony and happiness. For example, animals in pairs, swans, doves, phoenix and dragon, or beautiful flowers and avoid images showing violence or loneliness or too cold and strange. I do have a video about proper feng shui art. I will link it in the description box. And if you have animals in the wall art, make sure that animal is not in conflict with your animal sign. For example, the horse and the rat, they are the opposite and the ox and the goat are opposite. And if you have paintings of water, such as waterfall, make sure the direction of the water is not going out of the window because water represents money in feng shui. The last point is about finding your wealth corner. In feng shui, we generally call it wealth corner, but you also mean the power spot that can generate good energy and it's also good for meditation or manifestation of your dreams. It's basically a powerful area you can also meditate and uh, put your precious items there or something you value a lot. So it's not limited to money. And the number one is always the far corner from the door we say 45 degrees away from the door. It doesn't have to be exactly the 45, but the corner or any spot that's away from the entrance door can be a power corner. It can be a table, maybe a vanity, or you can set it up in a cabinet and collect objects that represent prosperity for you. For example, crystals, candles, coin jars, or any symbol or objects related to career success and uh, prosperity. And another area is in the closet. This is also a powerful area. You can collect important items. And since it's more hidden away, it's considered hidden wealth corner. So that's another spot you can set up. So that's all 16 points for a good bedroom feng shui. And every bedroom is different. Just focus more on the areas you can change. And don't worry about the areas you cannot change. When we have enough positive energy, it can often override the negative. So the negative side will not become a problem. So that's a video today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.